Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, we're going to talk about critical insights that you will absolutely need to tap into as a day trader or a swing trader going into next week, which begins April 25th, 2022. Now, hedge funds are fixing to lose billions of dollars, and that is actually great news for you as an individual trader if you know how to use it to your advantage. And I'm going to bring a little bit of light, some simple overall strategies that you can be able to utilize in which could make your life super easy and super lucrative as a trader going into next week and beyond next week. Now, if you're a millennial, I have just a brief deviation from the main message here, and that is check your mentality of the way you're going into next week because the market has conditioned you to be basically buying every dip out there. For a moment, I want you to stop. I want you to pause. Whatever you're doing right now, I want you to ask yourself a simple question. What will happen? If you buy the dip and it doesn't bounce, let's say you're trading Bitcoin, you buy the dip and it doesn't bounce. See, it even sounds weird because you can't even imagine this shit happening. What if you buy a particular stock that Jim Cramer is talking about on CNBC and he says, man, buy this dip. It's a great, it's a great deal. Ultimately, it's going to go up. Well, unless you're prepared to wait for your trade for the next three to five years, Okay, you may be at a point of incredible shock when you buy the dips next week. And trust me, there's going to be plenty of dips. Just understand, if you're buying the dip, let's say a stock drops 5% and you're like, man, I'm going to buy some call options on this thing, you may be totally shocked because that $5% 5 drop could end up being a 10% drop, 15% drop, 30% drop over the course of the next week, two weeks, up to 90 days, all right? And what better way to learn this than from some of the best traders in the world who just made that mistake, okay? So as you know, Bill Ackman is arguably top 100 traders and hedge fund managers of all times. He just recently lost $430 million. Apparently, he did not buy his 13 market move scores on time. Otherwise, he would have saved 430 million bucks. If you watched some of our recent videos, you know our traders made 13x, 1300% on shorting, basically doing exactly the opposite of what Bill Ackman is doing. So $430 million, the kickers in 90 days, guys. So some of you maybe had some losses in the past as a trader, and you're like, well, I've lost 8,000, I've lost 50,000. Guys, all the losses that you have had in the past, Okay, they absolutely pale in comparison to this hit that Bill Ackman just took. Now, in his defense, I say this, that some of the best traders, occasionally they'll have some big losses and understand that the size of this bet is not something that he or anybody else teaches you about trade size or trade management. Okay, because after you've been around the block in trade and you understand that the risk managing and putting 1% of your account into a trade is absolute absurdity. You will never build your account that way, okay? And this bet right here demonstrates a huge loss, but what's not on this slide is also some heavy bets that Bill Ackman placed over the years that have netted him 600 million, that have netted him over a billion dollars. So yes, the man just took a loss. But as a trader, okay, the one thing that you cannot afford, sometimes I get on the call, uh, with a trader that's trying to learn the program and some of the questions I get is like, man, Leo, I just can't, I can't get out of this. Man, I'm depressed. I, I, you know, all year I've been losing money and whatnot and I just can't snap out of it, man. I don't know. I'm afraid to take the next trade. Well, let me paint this picture for you. What do you think Bill Ackman is doing right now? Seriously, what do you think he's doing? He's sitting fucking crying right now? Oh my God, I lost 430 million? No, this dude right now is looking at charts, his whole research team, okay, he's running around, he's looking for the next big trade. Understand this, this trade right here, it's got nothing to do with the next trade that he's gonna take. And if he's gonna let this $430 million loss impact his mentality, there's no way he's gonna be able to put it to his next $600 million trade or a $1 billion trade, okay? so. Clearly, he should have known the 13 market moves and saved the money and positioned himself a little bit better. But understand that this loss right here was the result of him betting almost 12% of his entire firm's capital on one trade. And you're going to say, yeah, but don't he know how to manage the fucking trade size and money, guys? Understand, 
the way big money is made, often people talk about George Soros, how he made a billion dollars overnight. But nobody's actually pointed out the fact that he put at risk $10 billion of capital to make that billion, billion dollars overnight. All right. The same thing here. Um, Ackman, I think he even got a course or something out there or a long educational video on how to risk manage and stuff like that. But clearly, when he believes in the trade, he takes a lot more than 1%. He takes a lot more than 5% of his total trading capital. He put 12% on this trade. And on some other trades, he's had as much as 29% of his capital tied up in one trade. That's how he was able to make $600 million in one day. Now, what makes this loss, guys, actually something that he can brush away and move on, okay, is the fact that he had also had some big wins. So understand, if you're trying to move your account to the new level, I mean, maybe you're trading with 50K, you're trying to get to a million, maybe you're trading with 500K, you're trying to get to 20 million, okay, 13 market from formula will show you exact steps on how you can do that. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to have losses. Again, even the greatest traders, arguably, again, he's in the top 100 traders, hedge fund managers of all times. And even he, at times, will take a huge hit like this. So, but again, the point is not to let your mentality of your prior losses dictate the outcome of the great trades that you could be taking tomorrow. By the way, if you got a way to get a hold of him, send him a copy to the link of how you can get the third market moves course. Now, the market is the biggest psychological manipulation machine, and clearly it can even impact some of the greatest traders. All right, so the current conditions of the market, okay, since 2008, we had nothing but the market moving higher. Guys, this is the longest bull run ever in the history of the market. All right, 14 years of market moving higher, making a dip, moving higher, making a dip, moving higher, making a dip. So needless to say, the market participants are completely brainwashed, okay? They simply will not understand when the next dip comes and they're buying the dip and it actually doesn't bounce. They simply will have no clue what to do next. The only thing they're gonna be able to do is to sell, 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 sell and run for the exit at the same time. So instead of utilizing this strategy when, when the market structure has clearly changed, okay, it is time to position yourself to profit from these huge drops. And yeah, I'm not saying the market will never go back up again. I'm not saying that there's not gonna be reactions where if something drops hugely, maybe 30, 40%, they cannot bounce five to 10%, but the overall direction of the market at this point, we have been in the bear market and the old overall direction of the market is gonna be low. I know it's hard to imagine, but you know, some of these stocks that are still trading at crazy high valuations, they're still about to be slashed by as much as 50 to 70%. So the short selling opportunity is here. The question is, will you be taking advantage of it? So uh, here's, some charts to help you visualize what I just explained a little bit better. All right, so here's where Bill Ackman was buying and piling up into Netflix, all right? Uh, 550 bucks, $600 a share, that's where he started buying it. And what happens next is the one bad earnings report, right? Uh, which we alerted you about buying puts here. Uh, and so from 500, it drops down to 360. And this was a huge hit. And so this is where he went and put the biggest size of his position and he bought the dip because he thought, well, my God, we're almost half the way from all time times of Netflix. I'm getting a 40, 50% discount at this level right here. Let me go ahead and put on this $1.2 billion position on this thing. All right, so what you're looking at here without seeing this part of the chart is you're looking at a great bargain. And what I'm trying to tell you a lot of stocks are on the verge of doing this here. Now, some stocks just like Netflix has already gone through this sort of formation, the first gap down, and they're about to go for the second gap down, just like what you're seeing right here, Netflix just done. Now, normally, normally, given the bull market, buy the dip mentality, what you would see is exactly what you would, is, is exactly what transpired here. 
So it drops a little bit and it bounces. Now notice what's happening right here. There is no sign of a bounce. Now, not only the stock is 70% on sale from its all time highs, which wasn't so long ago. We're not even talking about a year ago. There's nobody wants to touch this thing with a stick. Everybody wants out. There's no sign of the bounce. How can one of the greatest stock in the history of the stock market be on sale 70% and nobody wants to touch it? Nobody wants to do a damn thing with it. Okay, and this is the market structural change that you're starting to see. And this is just the beginning of what I'm telling you. And if you find the right setup on the chart, you will be able to nail a lot more trades like this. So instead of buying the dip, if you understand the characteristic and the chart pattern, you're going to be able to position yourself utilizing short-term option strategy to profit from circumstances like this. And instead of maybe if you were a bull and you were happy making double your money or triple your money, some of this sort of criteria, guys, when things drop, they drop a lot faster. And that's why utilizing short-term weekly option strategies works a lot better when things drop compared to when things climb higher because generally you have to go longer term when you buy call options because things take a lot longer to climb higher. So if you understand this very simple fact, okay, if you've never made money when things drop, then pay very close attention to what I'm about to show you next because it is absolutely insane. Okay, so this is how Netflix chart look now. So we went from a couple of different time frames and I'm showing you overall picture. Now I want you to look at this part of the picture right here where it basically it goes sideways, sideways for some time, breaks out, goes slightly higher and this is the structural change in the picture because some of these drops, okay, they're now being accompanied by a huge increase in volume. And so the structural change is the gray candles right here, they were bullish buying activity. And this bullish buying activity now completely reverses. And the chart has, at this point, when Netflix trades is like 600, 550, right? The structural change is not that apparent to the marketplace. And keep this part of the chart in your mind as I'm about to show you a few other key charts that are incredibly critical to the market right now. So uh, understand that up to this point right here, up to this blue line, an average investor can't see straight. And when it drops to here, some investors, even the top 100 investors, they perceive this as a buying opportunity before this happens. So now, really focus on this part of the chart and understand when you're buying the dip this week in some names, including Bitcoin, including a lot of cryptocurrencies out there, okay? The next move in them has a way higher probability of doing this instead of bouncing and moving higher as you would normally see, okay? Especially supported by such strong accumulation distribution. I mean, nobody's buying, like everybody is selling, all right? Google, guys, I'm actually about to show you four charts as an exercise, okay? They slightly differ, the charts slightly differ, but as an exercise, I want you to try to determine which one of these four charts is the most important chart in the market right now. So first is the chart of Google. Take a close look. Okay, if you don't know how to look at the chart, guys, take our charts diversity recognition course. You should be able to glance at the chart two seconds. You should be able to see this chart should be speaking to you. It should be telling you things, okay, instead of listening to the news for 30 minutes, it's enough for you if you take the charts divergence and pattern recognition course and you study it, it should be enough for you to glance at this chart for two seconds and know exactly, okay, where this story is going next. Okay, so chart number one, chart number two, slightly different, some similarities here. We're looking now from Google, now we're looking at Amazon. Chart number three, we're looking at Microsoft. Uh, chart number four, we're looking at Tesla, never mind some of these uh, designations I've inserted here, uh, out of the four charts, again, okay? so we're looking at Tesla. I could have inserted more charts, but just as an exercise, I didn't want to put like 100 charts here, so four charts, okay, you got a chart of Tesla, you've got a chart of Microsoft, 
you've got a chart of Amazon, you've got a chart of uh, Google, which one is the most critical chart in the market right now and why? I'm not going to give you the answer quite yet, but I will shortly in the next few minutes here. At this point, I want you to look at same stocks, but a longer time frame. So all the four charts I've just shown you guys, they are on daily chart. And these are same stocks or same group stocks, but now we're looking at a weekly chart. And remember the part of the chart I've shown you on Netflix. I said, look, it just goes sideways for a while. It goes slightly higher. And then at a blue, char at a blue line, the chart starts deteriorating, right? That's where the market structure changes. What we would call this formation in 13 market moves, guys, it's a major, major top formation. The way we're not just necessarily calling it a top is because the difference between a major top and a top is a major top, something that takes place over a number of months. In other words, sometimes when you're a short-term trader, you may look at the one-day, one-minute chart, and you can notice some of these formations throughout the day, and you could be short in some because you know the next move is going to be lower based off the market move that you're trading. Well, these patterns are a lot more meaningful. Uh, okay, They don't necessarily tell you what's going to be taking place in the next five minutes. They don't tell you what's going to be taking place in the next you know, uh, 24 hours, but they do tell you that overall, in the near future, like in the next you know, five days to, you know, 90 days, okay, this is a major, major top that has a potential to drop in a crazy, crazy way. Look, if Amazon in the next 90 days trades down to 1800 bucks, I wouldn't be shocked. Actually, it may actually drop down to 90 bucks. <laughs> you may be like, wow, Leo, you're really going crazy here. Well, don't forget, Amazon had announced the stock split. So, if it drops to 1800 the stock split is in the later part of May, and it's a $20, it's a 20 to 1 stock split. So if Amazon drops to 1800 in the next 30 days and it does the stock split, Amazon's going to be at 90 bucks or maybe maybe even lower. But easy, easy 100 bucks is, is where it's going after the stock split, which means there's about a 30% drop right here. Now, the next chart is Facebook. Okay, uh, Similar conditions, but look, the opportunity here is just not quite as great, right? Because... I mean, we're from 380, we're down to 184. Yes, the chart looks bearish as hell, but between the two, right, which one would you short? I mean, this one is already slashed in more than half. Uh, Netflix is slashed 70%. I mean, it, the logical question is, who is next? Well, here we have the pre-existing condition where it looks just like Netflix before Netflix fell completely out, right? And we're not talking about whether Amazon is a great company, whether it's a great long-term investment. We're simply stating that based off the chart and the formation, okay, Amazon could be next for a 30-40% move lower. Uh, Facebook, still a great potential to go lower, but it's already down so much, right? It's a lot easier psychologically to short this, this sort of uh, chart because you're like, well, sh look at this. I mean, sure. I mean, it just looks like a five-year-old can look at this and say, well, it looks like it's dropping. And it's only so because you're looking at what has already happened. Okay, now try to picture this part of the chart and apply it right here. Right? So this is where Amazon could be easily going next to where if we review the chart of Amazon, let's say 30 days from now, it could be looking like the chart of Facebook or Netflix, okay, and let's take a look at the chart of Google. Again, all these charts we're reviewing right now, guys, the weekly time frame. So on Google, we have a very major top formation as well. Uh, it is uh, forming over a number of months, right? I mean, this top information is not as long as Amazon's, for example, but still, we're looking at a course of seven, eight months. The top keeps forming. It's unable. At one point, it does go about 3,000. Okay, but it's just unable to break that. And this is a major, major top information that highly resembles that of Netflix before Netflix just started completely falling out. All right, and here's the top information on Tesla. Now, this is a major, major top information, guys. All right, the strongest bull run ever, and then it just stalls. And people are still bullish on Tesla as hell. And long term, I mean, there are clear reasons to do so, but why would you want to do it right now? And some of you may say, well, it had a good earnings report. Sure, but why didn't it go higher then? 
All right. Why was, if we look at certain indicators, why was everybody selling while the price action was actually going higher? So that's something for you to look. You got to read the charts between the lines. And when we're looking at this, we've got every major FANG stock is pointing to a major top in formation if they haven't already dropped tremendously. And Tesla clearly is the strongest stock because if we're really to break this charge down, this one has not deteriorated as rapidly as the rest of the as the rest of the group. It's getting beyond ridiculous, right? So Bill Gates can't stay away from shorting Tesla stock. Uh, Elon Musk is being upset about it, and I mean the psychological aspect of this is such that if Elon Musk really believed the stock was going higher, why would he be upset? He should be happy that Bill Gates shorted half a billion dollars of Tesla shares, options, and stock combined, okay, but why is he so upset, right? If somebody keeps, I mean, partially, why Tesla had such an incredible run high from here because it was so heavily shorted. So the more people short Tesla, okay, the higher the probability of a short squeeze. But clearly, Elon Musk doesn't think that Tesla could be going higher any time soon. Therefore, he's upset. But if you look at the standpoint of Bill Gates, he's like, okay, yeah, I'm short half a billion. Elon Musk calls him out on his climate stance. But look, understand this. Bill Gates is in, in making money. So he bought some options. He shorted the stock heavy. What he's looking at, it's like a potential 5x trade for him. Make, make the 5x trade. Now you got 3.5 billion. And he can easily use that money from short in Tesla to actually devoted to that charity that they were that they were getting into argument about to actually hold, help world climate. So what's the problem with that, right? If you know, if all the stars are aligned and you just know that, yeah, Tesla may be the strongest stock in the group and it has not fallen yet, but you know for a fact that it will fall in the next 90 days, okay? Why wouldn't you put a big bet and profit? Let's say you're the biggest Tesla stock fan ever. Wouldn't you want to own more shares of Tesla? Well, if it meant that you first have to short it, make money on the drop, and utilize the drop when it's selling, you know, 50% off from current levels, and double the shares that you own, wouldn't that be a good thing for you overall? And that's what puzzles me. Most of the people say, well, if you're short selling, you're the enemy of the stock, or you're like, look, if you're a trader, your goal is just to capture these opportunities, and there's time to short, and there's time to be bullish. And we get multiple confirmations, not just in the group, okay, but we get multiple confirmations that earnings reports right now in these market trajectory and conditions, they don't matter. Tesla had a great earnings report. The video I did on Tesla, I said, look, it's likely to have great earnings report. I mean, but it doesn't mean that the stock is going to move higher. So great reports in these market conditions, okay, they don't necessarily equate to a stock moving higher, which is highly puzzling if you're a brand new trader. So my money is on Bill Gates on this one, guys. And uh, as you know, we've shorted the top in Tesla many, many times. And looking at this chart, it's got a beautiful potential for a huge uh, short at this point. Now, another thing I wanted to point out that we're actually getting a record number of stocks announcing stock splits. And one of them, one of the biggest ones recently is Amazon announced a 24 one stock split. The reason these major companies, especially if the stock is highly volatile, they would want to do that because they perceive that the volatility in their shares is going to increase. That's actually the number one reason to do a stock split. Because one thing, if you got a hundred dollar stock and it drops to 80 or 70, that's a 20, 30% drop. It just doesn't look so bad, right? You got a hundred dollar stock that drops to 80 bucks. Okay, we can live with it. But imagine seeing in the news, one day 20% drop in the shares of Amazon. Well, at current level, it's under 3,000, we'll just round it up. Let's say it's a 3,000, 20% of that would be, you know, 600 bucks. 30% drop would be $900. Can you imagine in, can you, can you only imagine next week there's, there's a headline surfacing saying, holy shit, Netflix dropped, Netflix shares dropped today, $780. <laughs> like, 
I mean, this is just uncomprehensible, right? Uh, Dollar-wise, this, this would probably be the greatest one-day drop in the history of the, of the market in one stock, right? But when you look at $100 a share and it drops to 80 it just doesn't seem as bad. It, does, it You know, if it drops to 77 bucks, right, would be an equivalent of a drop at 750 So uh, instead of getting these crazy headlines, which, by the way, I think Amazon was a little bit too late to do it because the stock split is not going to take place uh, till end of May, but the earnings report is on tap this week uh, in four days. So we may still get that scary headline. Now, there's all sorts of variations, of course. It could bounce first and then have that colossal drop. It could just go straight down like Netflix. Uh, but overall, the trajectory is lower than Amazon shares. It's just going to be a matter where it's going to drop 5%, 10%, 20%. The big drop is coming. And it could be a multi-day drop, right? You could drop 3% on one day, another 3% on the next day, another 3% overall. It could do like a 10% drop within three days, which you know still equates to a huge, huge amount. Now, the most important chart in this video, guys, is the chart of Google. So I'm actually going to give you the answer now, showing you the pre-existing conditions. And the reason why Google chart is the most important chart on the market right now is because Google has actually broken its key level. See this level of 2500 on Google? Well, as you know, if you've been following the market over the last year, Google has been the most bullish technology stock. It actually outperformed Tesla. This 2500 level, once it broke above that, that's when Google really got some super strong traction and at one point traded above 3000 So now on the way lower, Google is at 2500 bucks, and, and, and that really was the line and sand where this used to be a huge, huge support for Google. So after it broke above that level, uh, it was a, you know, a huge resistance for a while for Google to break above 2500 Now on the way lower, it's the resistance, and notice what happened on Friday. This is probably the most meaningful event that took place on Friday. It breaks that resistance level of 2,500. And it, and it doesn't just like dip under it. Sometimes what stocks will do, for example, you see this white candle, they'll just dip under. As you see that white candle, it just dipped briefly under 2,500 and bounced right back out, which is actually a bullish reversal candle. But in this case, it dipped and it just kept going lower and lower and lower. Now, there's a huge significance on this one chart by itself is not going to tell you the whole story, but let me break this down to you. Last few times when Google actually attempted to break this level of 2500 to the downside, the market was also going lower. And so let me show you the overall picture of the market here so you can understand things a little bit better. So the market in those four instances have dropped to 4200 just briefly under 4150, 4150, 4150. So the overall level in the market, if we were to draw a line in the sand, would be right here. It would be 4150. I mean, that's your level that the market needs to break in order to move significantly lower. Now, notice Google, the most successful stock of the last 12 months, has actually broken its key level already while the market is still at 42.71. Now, this is extremely, extremely meaningful, especially if you combine it with the next picture chart of the VIX. So notice every instance when VIX has gone up in this level 38, 37, 36, right? And also draw a line in the sand right here at about 30, 35 overall if we're to average out. So. In order for the market to crash, VIX needs to break above this level. And considering the expansion of the move on the VIX, we can get a major, major day on the VIX to where it actually shoots to 36. So the important part is to watch that tomorrow, Monday, April the 25th, next 72 hours, okay? It's going to resolve into the falling station. Either way, we get a huge move to the upside on the VIX at 36 and it stalls out, and we can get 
a retracement before it's going to make another run higher or we're going to get VIX maybe making a couple of small candles until the rest of the thing stocks are going to report earnings this week which is going to be Tuesday and Thursday so Tuesday and Thursday are your big days where VIX where these stocks could potentially flop substantially VIX could actually break above that and if you were to look at a longer time frame chart on the VIX then if we if we get above this level on the VIX all right I mean VIX could go to 50 I mean that's it 50 55 on the VIX should not be a surprise based of all the earnings reports that we got going on this week now again you want to look at three of these charts combined to really get the story here all right the strongest stock in the tech sector breaks the key level ahead of time before the general market breaks the key level right here and before VIX gets above a key level right here of uh, 30 35 36 38 okay so Google is actually showing you that there is greater room for the VIX to go higher and that the market overall is on the verge of breaking that level of 4150 now especially I try to point that out in the last video I'm gonna make that point one more time because it's extremely important when you combine all these charts with the market sentiment the market sentiment is okay you've got one of the top hedge fund managers just lost 400 million dollars uh, you've got JP Morgan head of trading he's saying that the market near-term rally and he says this right here uh, this green era this is where he goes on CNBC and he says that this is also the same time that a third chain market moves we post the video saying that he's entirely wrong and the market is actually going to do exactly the opposite and that's what you get clearly another guy from the hedge fund industry that needs the third to market moves course but look at all these other instances where we have pointed out precisely when it was time to short the market and this trajectory is not going anywhere okay the sentiment is still rather bullish in relation of where it could be in the next week in the next few weeks the fact that you got some really sharp guys like Marko Kalanovic that is unable to get a precise read on the market and he's exactly 180 degrees on the opposite side of the market tells you that the market is still so complacent while the charts are deteriorating at major speeds that we could get a colossal colossal drop here within a very short amount of time which could be as early as this week could be as early as next couple of weeks all right but looking at these hedge funds making some major major mistakes right now in the market tells you that the opportunity to short these bounces just like what we have been doing they're here so if you understand how to short okay you can make a ton of money right now the question is what to short all right so the third market move stands is such on the market right now that we have actually been in the bear market uh, for a number of months for at least four or five months we have been in the bear market and the rest of the market has been struggling with that idea they've been saying the recession is not going to start now and we're still at a, a year away we're still two years away well the recession is here and that's why these charts are deteriorating so fast so if you switch your buying the dip mentality to shorten the bounce mentality guys and you apply the 13 market moves the sky is the limit so we've talked about the VIX chart I want to point this out that and this is a very general video right and simply understanding the overall market direction is not what gets you paid as a trader in multiple videos recently I have pointed out that when you trade options it's all about your entry your strike and your exit and you have to get really specific on exactly what you do when and what sort of strike price you select for example last week I had some people that own 160 strike Airbnb puts had some guys that owned 150 strike Airbnb puts the 160 strike Airbnb puts made 5x the 150 strike didn't make anything they expired worthless so this is just a quick example of how 
a great trade, no one in direction, no one everything, okay, could have made you either 5x or lost you your entire investment in the trade. So these things, they have to be very, very specific. Entry, strike, exit. If these are your areas where you struggle with, guys, I invite you to schedule a call and talk to your senior trader here. So once you get a good handle on these things, you really got to understand what move you're trading and what is the most lucrative stock for you to focus on. Because all these big heavyweight champs that I just outlined the reported earnings, you know, Apple and Amazon and all of these big guys, the options are going to be so overpriced. If you're working with a medium-sized account, you can afford to buy one or two options on Amazon or something like that because they're going to be hugely overpriced. They're going to be carrying huge premiums in both sides of the direction. So if you're really trying to make the most from the earnings season, all right, I'm letting you briefly glance at all the stocks that we're actually paying very close attention to this earnings week. Okay, so that's tomorrow, Monday the 25th. Three stocks in the morning, three stocks at night. Uh, Tuesday, four stocks in the morning, 10 stocks plus after the market close. Uh, there's over a couple hundred companies that report in earnings uh, this week, guys. But as you can see, we focus on specifically the companies that give you a high chance of capturing a big size move. Uh, pre and post earnings reports and as you can see I'm not going to reveal all the data to you but we keep track of the historic DTR the last eight quarters okay and we have data of actually recording the actual move for the stocks from prior quarters so it gives us a really good probability of what move a particular stock could actually make before and after the earnings report so if you want to trade any of these ticker symbols with us and you want to know the strike when exactly do we enter sometimes we will enter and front run a symbol we don't do it very often most of the time we'll put on the trade the following morning after the earnings report uh, if you want to know exactly when are we jumping in the trade is it 9 30 is it 10 13 is it we wait until lunchtime are we trade in the last hour all of that stuff makes a huge difference on the outcome of your trade all right, guys, so we've done the research on all of these names for you. We have the statistical data, which gives us a huge edge on trading these earnings reports compared to anybody else out there on YouTube, okay? If you want to take your account to a substantially higher level, not next year, not five years from now, if you want to do it this week, guys, the requirements are very simple, all right? You've got to learn the 13 market moves. You've got to understand the charge divergences and you've got to schedule a call with a 13 market moves coach. You will actually be able to trade with a senior trader here at 13 market moves telling you specifically which strikes, what's your entry, what's your exit, all the stuff that we're going to be doing here ourselves. You get to participate, you get to communicate with a trading coach here. So if you're ready to take advantage of this crazy markets, make sure you go to 13MMTV or 13MarketMoves.com, schedule a call today and get yourself prepared for a crazy trading week ahead.